Right, what we're going to do this episode is set up this kind of interaction with the chatbot. We need the chatbot to identify if it's an existing customer that they're speaking to or if it's a new customer. If it's an existing customer, we want them to perform a DPA check because that's what's typically done over WhatsApp or over the phone uh, for that, that type of chatbot where they don't necessarily have access to a login. And if they are a new customer, we want to be able to create them a customer profile and so that in the next step of building this chatbot, they can then place or manage an order. And we're going to be creating a pretend database to access and store these details and two separate tools for the chatbot, one which is for creating a customer profile and another for performing this data protection check. So what we'll be able to do is if I am an existing customer and I want to check on what my registered email is, and give them my name, John Doe. It will then go away, look up those details. It's passed the data protection check, retrieved the details and confirmed the email in a chat message. Great, say now that I am a new customer and I want to create a profile. We wouldn't actually say this in practice, but we need to set this up so that we can have the functions and tools available when we want to do some order management. So these are all the details it needs. Let's go ahead and put them in. There we go. Great, and there we go. It's created our new customer and stored it in the customer's database. It's also assigned a unique customer ID. What we'll also implement is how to do data validation and prompt the system to ask the user to either correct the information they put in or for additional information. Right, let's get stuck in. Okay, so we're going to assume that we've got some sort of table in a database that's storing our customer information, but we're going to store it just directly in code to make our lives a little bit easier. We don't need to get faff around with the database just yet. So let's call this customer database. And I've got some example records that I'm going to pull across that, of course, were generated by ChatGPT. In these records, we have the name of the customer, the postcode, their date of birth, the unique customer ID, first line of the address, phone number, email, that sort of thing. So some personal details about the customer and an ID to tie back to them. I'm not making any assumptions at this point about where the chatbot's gonna be used. We might eventually want it to act over the phone in a call center, or it might be used over WhatsApp. In any case, if we're going to want to perform sensitive actions for that customer, we're gonna to need to verify the customer details. Um, so there's two situations where we have either an existing customer who's wanting to perform some actions or it's a new customer, in which case we need to gain the relevant details. We can implement this behavior in the chatbot by creating two tools. One tool that performs some sort of data protection check. Let's call it data protection check. And we're going to need another tool to create a new customer profile. Great. So let's assume that to perform our data protection check, we're going to need three bits of personal information. We're going to need the customer's name, which is a string. We're going to need their postcode, which is also a string, and their date of birth, which is a string. Instead of date of birth, I'm actually going to pass in the year of birth as a string, an integer actually, int, the month of birth as an int, and the day of birth as an int. I'm doing this because it's harder for the language model to make a mistake when I've passed in three explicit parameters. Otherwise, it might confuse the formatting, whether the month or the day comes first. Uh, this way, there's, there's no mistake, and it can clarify things more easily with the user if it doesn't understand the ordering. So we now need a descriptive doc string to describe what this tool is going to do. It's going to perform a data protection check against a user or customer to retrieve customer details. The args 
are going to be our name, which is a string. This is the customer first and last name. The postcode, customer registered address, the year of birth, the month of birth, and the day of birth. We should also specify a return type, which is going to be our dictionary. Now I'm going to be explicit as to what's returned so that the chatbot or the language model knows exactly what it's going to get so that it can then work out, if you like, that it's going to need to perform a data processing check to get the customer ID before then it might need to use that customer ID in the next episode to retrieve an order relevant to that customer. Right, so that's all of the information that's going to get past the language model. Now we need to actually do our data protection check. So we're going to want to loop through our existing customers. In reality, in production, this would probably correspond to a SQL query to get any relevant customers from the database. But for our case, it's, we've only got two customers. So we're going to iterate through each one. For customer in customers database, if the customer name, and I'm going to lowercase so we remove any issues with cases not matching up. So if the name's equal and the postcode is equal, Again, I'm going to lower to avoid any case issues. And to be explicit, we're going to compare the year, month, and the day separately. So the first four characters of the date of birth, we convert that to an int, should be equal to our year of birth. And we convert the fifth to seventh characters, that should be equal to our month. And finally, we compare the eighth to tenth characters, should be equal to our date of birth. Right, have I got that right? 0 to 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5 to 7, 5, 6, 8 to 10, 8, 9, which is excluding the dashes. Great. So now we're checking all three of those details, close the braces. If we have managed to match the customer successfully, then we can return that the DPA check has passed, and then we can specify the customer details retrieved. If we're able to get through the whole loop, so all of the customers and not found a customer that matches the details, then we need to tell our language model that by saying DPA check failed, no customer with these details found. Lovely. So that's sorted out our data protection check. Now let's create a tool for creating a new customer. And then after we've done that, we'll give it a whirl. So what details are we going to need for this new customer? We're going to need to know the name string. And we can specify, actually no, let's be more explicit. More explicit is best. So let's specify that we need a first name string and we need a surname string. We're going to need to know the year of birth. Again, we're being explicit. Integer, the day or the month of birth, which is an integer again. And the day of birth, also an int. We're also going to need to know the first line of the address, the phone number and the email. And the postcode. String, first line of address, string, phone number, which is string, and email, which is also a string. Now we need our sensible doc string again. Creates a customer profile so that they can place orders. We'll assume for this process that the customer has to settle up and pay their bill over email so that after they place an order, they'll receive an email telling them how to pay for their order. Now args again. We're also going to need to specify return type, which is just going to be a string confirmation that the profile was created successfully. So we can also perform validation here on these parameters and return back any validation errors, which the chatbot can then raise with the user. So for instance, if we had a specific format that we wanted the phone number in, we could check for that format here and then return the message to the language model, which can either then resubmit it with the information it has directly without needing to have input from the customer, or it can then present the error to the customer in a sensible way to get them to correct the information. So in this case, let's just perform some basic validation on the phone number. A phone number we're going to assume needs to be 11 digits long. So if the length of the phone number is not equal to 11, then this is a very basic error message and it's not really appropriate for how you would do it in a real setting but it's a good way to demonstrate how the concept works. So let's assume we've now performed our complete validation. We can create a new customer ID which is going to be equal to the length of the current customer's database plus one and now let's append it to our database. 
So because we've got the first name and surname combined and the date of birth combined, we're going to have to format our inputs so that they match this format in the database. So when we're inserting our record, we can put a name and set that to be our first name, put a space and our surname. Let's format this so it's a bit easier to read. Got our name, then let's create our, oh, I've spotted a typo. Now let's add our date of birth. So that's gonna be our DOB and it's gonna be equal to, we can format it so that it's consistent. That will be our year of birth. So we can format the input integers to always be too long by going month of birth and same with the day of birth. So let's add in our month of birth. We want it to always be two digits long. And our day of birth, also always two digits long, so it's consistent. We also need our postcode, customer ID, first line of the address. So let's add our postcode. We also need our phone number and our email. We're also gonna need our unique customer ID, which is cust underscore and then our customer ID. I believe is the same format app without the underscore. Let's get rid of that. Format this a bit nicer. There we go. And now we can return customer registered with customer ID. So those are our two tools, verifying an existing user and creating a new user. So let's now connect these two tools to our agent. And now that we've created the tools, it's actually quite straightforward to attach it to our existing chatbot. We'll just need to import data protection check and our create new customer. Then all we need to do is add this to our tool list, data protection check, create new customer. And finally, we need to update what we're telling the agent that it can do. So now we can say it can create new customer profiles. Now let's specify retrieve or create customer profiles. If the customer already has a profile, use the DP perform data protection to retrieve their details. If not, create them a profile. There we go, we've been explicit. We've given it a little summary of what it can do here. Retrieve or create profiles, and then say if they've already got profile, perform a data protection check to retrieve the details, and if not, create them a profile. This seems a bit strange without anything to do once we perform the DPA check or retrieve the profile, but we're setting it up for the next episode when we can manage orders or place a new order against the customer profile. Great, now that we've set that up, let's give it a whirl. Right then, hi, can you tell me what my registered email is? So it now knows that it needs to perform a DPA check and it knows it's got to ask for the name, postcode, and date of birth. Now let's just have a check what was one of the existing customers in there. And actually to make it easier, let's present our the existing customers on this right hand side. So from our Streamlit front end, let's from the chat, from tools, import customers database. And then on the right hand side, let's give it some capitals, make it a bit neater. We also no longer need this message history here now that we've got the chat. So then st dot, then we can do st dot write and our customers database. And when we then refresh the main page, it looks a little bit like this. We can see our structured format on the right so that we can confirm which customers are currently in the database. So now let's give it a test. What email is associated with my profile? Great, now it's asking for the three bits of information we specified in that data protection check. So I'm gonna say my name is John Doe, as we can see in the customers database. Postcode of SW1A1AA and date of birth 1990 01. All right, so that hasn't worked. Let's try and figure out why. Let's store all of the data protection checks in an array so then we can see each time this function is called what it's called with. I'm also going to include in here, let's move this to the end of the function because what I want to confirm is that these details here are what's being passed, what we expect them to be, so that I'm doing the indexing correct. Great, and now in our front end, let's import our data protection checks and display it on the right hand side as before. Now if we give it another go, we should be able to see exactly what's happening when it's performing that data protection check.
I need to check my email, my registered email. So my full name is John Doe. Postcode is SW1A, 1A, and date of birth is 1990-0101. Right, now, so what's happened here? So it's correctly put in John Doe as the name. It's correctly put in the postcode, although it is lowercase. It's correctly put in the year, the month, and the day. So what is not matching up then? It's also correctly extracting the day, actually, is it? So in this record, we'll expect 1985, 05, and 15. So the month that we're extracting to compare is not quite right. Why is that? Let's have a look. I've got a dash here. That's the problem, isn't it? We actually need this to be 5 colon 7. Now let's give it another go. I need to check my registered email. Great, they've managed to pass DPA. We can see the message that's been returned to our chatbot and the customer details, and then it's presented the information in a much more user-friendly way. And it's, as we would have hoped, used an appropriate, probably the first time it's used a good pun since we've uh, been building it, and I'm not pulling, pulling your leg. Nice one. It hasn't populated this data protection check here though, uh, and that's because we've done it afterwards. So let's just move this back to the start now that we know the format is correct and we can get rid of these examples. Now we should always be able to see this data protection check. So it's been able to do the data protection check, great. Let's clear the chat and have another go to create a new customer. At the moment, we haven't given it any conditions about when it should create a profile. So we need to explicitly say that I need to create a profile, but we'll tidy that up in the last episode. So I'm going to be called Will Thomas. Date of birth is 01-1890. Postcode, let's go with DR121DR. On the street. Phone number. Now, remember, we needed to have exactly 11 characters. So I'm going to put a dodgy phone number, which doesn't have 11, and hopefully it will raise that error back to us. And WW at Gmail. Now, I wish I had that email. There we go, looks like it should be 11 digits. So let's say, oops, I made a mistake. It's actually, there we go. Customer has been created. Customer three, welcome to our flower family. And there you have it. We've updated our flower shop chatbot so that you can retrieve existing profiles, customer profiles, and create new customer profiles. We've also shown how you can do data validation using tools so that the chatbot will tell the customer that the input they've gave is incorrect. And we've also seen how we can debug this with our chatbot state displayed on the right hand side so we can see and quite quickly identify what's going wrong. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And in the next episode, we're going to look at how we can do order management from a chatbot. See you in the next episode.